Hello, I would like to welcome you today to this Air Traffic Technology International webinar. My name is Ben Sampson. I'm the editor of Air Traffic Technology International magazine. So today, we, the webinar is titled Industry and ANSPs, a new partnership approach. Uh, we are going to talk about and explore some of the industry's leading examples of partnership working, courtesy of two companies here, two organizations, Turn and, and Skysoft. So before I, I introduce our presenters today, um, I would just like to run through some of the basics of the of the uh, webinar platform uh, in case people aren't familiar with it. So we have our main screen on the left and on the right hand side, uh, we have a number of tabs, including a Q&A tab. What I would ask you to do, uh, firstly, thank you for tuning in, but I would like to ask you one more thing. And that is if you have any questions during the presentations at all at any time, please do submit them using the Q&A tab on the right hand side of your screen. They won't be read out immediately, but after the presentations are complete, I will ask those questions uh, to, our, to our presenters. So please don't be shy. Um, these webinars are more fun, more interesting if we can really quiz the presenters and, and put them through their paces. And I'm sure they're really looking forward to that. So I'll, I'll move on now. I'll, I'll introduce uh, Claude first. Claude uh, Lavachier has been CEO of Skysoft ATM since January 2023 uh, and has led sales for that organization since 2006. Uh, he has a long career in ATM and a proven track record of working with air navigation service providers uh, around the world in the field of video recording and ATM automation. Um, I think it's fair to say with his experience of the ATC sector, he has a truly unique perspective on the evolution of the industry. Hello, Claude. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. And you, hello to everyone. Yes, well, I'm very well. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. I'm, I'm glad you can join us. Um, uh, and also waiting here very patiently, we have uh, Magnus Marvodarsson, who is CEO of Turn Systems, joining us from Iceland. Uh, he has been CEO of Turn Systems since 2009. Uh, he is also a very renowned figure in the field of technology and financial management. His educational background uh, includes a BSc in industrial technology development and automation from Reykjavik University uh, and advanced studies in company finance at the University of Iceland. Uh, he, he has carved a unique niche in uh, integrating technological innovation and financial acumen. Hello, Magnus. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Good, good. So I, I think that's enough of an introduction from from me. I think most of the viewers here know uh, probably know you better than I do, and and, and know what uh, know the sort of topics that you like to talk around and, and the subject. So uh, I, I'm going to leave you to it, uh, Magnus. If we could start with you, I believe you got a short presentation for us, and then Claude, you're going to do the same. So Magnus, over to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you again, Ben, and hi everybody. Yes, uh, I would like to start just to tell you a little bit about Turn. Uh, we are owned by Isar ANS, that is the NSP in Iceland, uh, controlling uh, you know big area in the North Atlantic Ocean. Uh, there are and there are, are part of the North Atlantic region. region. Uh, they have a few neighbors, uh, as you see there on the on the, on the slides. Uh, and this is a complex area. It is an oceanic area and also yeah, a tactical area. It is also connection between the Europe and the States. Or, or Canada. So there are a lot of things to think of when you are, you know, the main supplier for ANSP like, like ESA ANS. Um, yes, uh, there you see a picture of the area itself. As I said, it is, it's an oceanic area, but today it is more moving into be a tactical area. It is, you know, the surveillance and the new technology, they are getting surveillance of most of the area. So it is changing to that. Um, Turn systems, uh, we are 80 employees here. Uh, all, most of them are here in Iceland, or, or around 60, 60. And then we have uh, offices in, uh, in, in, in Budapest, we have a few in Poland, and also in, in Ethiopia. Um, we pro have provided others with our solutions, uh, mainly in Asia. We have uh, I believe it's along 16 airports uh, in Asia that we have. Some of them quite big ones, uh, 30 million passengers in, uh, in one in Korea, Jeju Island, 
Then we have uh, two or three 20 million passengers and then few uh, around 10 million passengers. So it is like uh, medium size airports or large airports. Um, then we have also a backup system for the four main airports in, in South Korea. Um, we have four, uh, sorry, three, uh, could say products. Uh, Aries for Tower and Polaris ATM, that is by far our main product. And then Orion, our simulator to train air traffic controllers for ACC Tower and also approach. Uh, Polaris, a little bit about that. Uh, uh, just to tell you, I think it's important because of the discussion we will have later when we talk about our ATM system or like Polaris, we are actually not talking about one system. It's 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 many systems or and services. So and that's maybe the one of the points that we will come into today, today me and Cloud and uh, and 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 this this is important to recognize. Uh, um, one of our biggest uh, um, customer outside Iceland is Hongkong Control. We are working very closely with Hong Kong Control also. So we could say the main influencer in uh, Polaris, the, the, our future ATM system, is ESA INS and also Hong Kong Control. Uh, we are providing them with a backup system for their uh, area and also for the approach for Budapest Airport. So uh, current challenges. I wanted to talk a little bit about that for the in the ATM industry. Uh, there's increasing uh, traffic flow uh, that will mean that, you know, we need new technology. There is more load on the air traffic controllers and all the stuff, technical stuff also, more load on the systems. And, 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 and we need to have, you know, have a new innovation in this, in this domain. Yeah, and also there is, a, you know, technical the advancement and integration. Uh, and there are also environmental concern a lot now regarding the flights, not maybe the system itself, but mainly the airplanes. They are polluting the world, and there is a lot of concern regarding that. And the ANSPs can help a lot, and their suppliers with uh, you know ha you know have a less pollution with the flights. Cybersecurity is also a big threat now. Uh, and also there's the system today are there are you know could say more and more need to connect them to the world often they are not just connected but now it's more and more need to have them connected so cybersecurity is a big factor now and regulation uh, also uh, you know we will see a change in the regulation in europe uh, in 2028 that will impact the market uh, i believe considerably both uh, opportunities and threats in that for a company like Turner Systems. So, uh, if we talk more about the market condition today, uh, now I'm talking about Europe. There, we could say there is a duopoly. There are two main suppliers that have around, I think, 70 or 80 percent of the flights in Europe. So, you know, that is, uh, and that is causing uh, frustration, maybe not that part, but, you know, they, they have so much uh, dominance over the market that, that there, there is some frustration in the market with the NSPs. Uh, and now what we are seeing is the, uh, the big suppliers are buying the small ones. And so, uh, you know, there will be some conjunction in, in the market. Uh, we need innovation, as I said before, and ANSPs are, you know, really need that. There, there is a, a lot of things that are happening, happening and, in, and a lot of new technology that we need to bring into the ATM market. And uh, there is also, I believe, a need to be, you know, more flexible with a flexible architecture and, uh, you know, have uh, maybe more than one main supplier for their systems. And that is what we will... Uh, talk about uh, are there, you know ANSPs are trying to solve part of this with alliance as some of you know about there are main the two main alliance in Europe it, it is because they Copans and ITAC uh, this solves some of the problem but creates others so and it is there is a yeah there are there are things that you know are not that great with it but uh, 
I mean, we believe that we have a different approach that will, could say, be a better one than the, those alliance. Um, so can can NSPs, especially as the market is in Euros, Europe, change this? Uh, we believe so, but the, 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 you know they need to maybe change how they think. Uh, they need to invest in house. In they will need to have the you know knowledge themselves. Uh, not all of it, but more. They are putting you know the big suppliers. You know they are, have all the knowledge, so that means that the ANS, uh, NSPs are you know re really uh, need them. We need to promote promote open standards um, uh, because that, we think that is the key. Like I said before, an ATM system is not the one system. There, there are many systems, and there is no need to one supplier to provide all these systems. You could uh, uh, have different suppliers with the different systems, and that is what, what we believe the ANSP need to start to think of. And you know. Foster in, in uh, industry collaboration and also, also strengthen the vendor relationship. And this is what you know, Ter System and SkySoft are really focusing on now with their owners and also their customers. And that will also call for a robust IT infrastructure to have a modular system where you can have different suppliers. You need to you know need to have a robust infrastructure. And then as, again, the regulation is changing rapidly. Not now, and that that will be a challenge. And 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 the NSPs need to follow this and know why this is happening and and have a be a more part of it. Yeah, and and explore uh, other uh, solutions. So just uh, uh, one slide more about the. Polar system, or what we have been doing in the last 20 years with the being having a modular system, um, we have uh, had a UI for create a UI for free flight data processing system, so we can put our UI on other flight data processing systems. Um, we actually have also uh, replaced uh, modules in. Uh, flight data processing systems. So, so, and this is you know what we what you can do if you have a modular system, have the knowledge, and have have customer like Isavia that is willing to do things like this. And what we are the next steps now for us is connecting other or third-party modules to our systems. Uh, so we are planning on not developing everything ourselves, but uh, having. Uh, third parties, and we are in a dialogue with partners similar as SkySoft to provide part of our systems. And this is the what we we think is the future for us and other others and also other NSPs. Uh, I mentioned this before. I think everybody need to recognize this this big change, AIS change. Um, I don't know how much. Actually, ANSPs are thinking of it. We 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 see that this, it's like everybody's sleeping. It's a huge change and will affect the market a, a big time. Um, like I said, there is opportunity in this, but it's also a big threat, especially for smaller uh, uh, suppliers in this domain. So this was my presentations. Uh, Thank you for attention and just looking forward to hear your questions later on. Thanks, Megan. That's, that's really interesting. Some, some great points there. I was um, always interested to hear about how the industry, about the, how the sector is changing and, and, um, and some, some, I was quite interested there about how, you, about where the change comes from. That, that always, that always interests me, but we'll, we'll get to all that later. We'll let, we'll let Claude um, have, have his say first. Um, so, Good. Um, please tell us about SkySoft and, and where you're coming from and, and, uh, and what you'd like to communicate today. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you uh, also to Magnus for uh, introducing, in fact, uh, the, the, the topic. I think we are sharing a lot of views 
and that's why we are partnering today on this webinar but also on on business more widely so about skysoft uh we have uh, a few years now uh, been in the market since 2001 and uh, we are the subsidiary of SkyGuide, the Swiss INSPs, developing most of the core components that are currently used in operation at SkyGuide. Um, and as you know, SkyGuide being in the center of Europe, we have one of the most complex airspace in Europe and we have provided uh, over the last 20 years, um, the core components that uh, help our controllers to uh, to um, uh, separate aircraft here in this airspace, very difficult airspace. Um, one of the main, uh, I would say, dimension of uh, Skysoft is that we have always been willing to provide innovation into this business. I think we were amongst the first one to, uh, to use uh, uh, cuts uh, monitors, for instance, in this business, we are, uh, I think, also the first one uh, to use Windows on operating system uh, for the, the core uh, ATM system. And we also were, I think, the first one to introduce uh, open source ATM components with our uh, Albatros uh, community back in 2009. Um, Something we made, uh, which is very specific also to uh, our um, environment, is uh, the development of the controller working position recording. And over the, the last uh, 15 years, we have been able to uh, sell over um, uh, 30 countries, uh, so to over 30 countries, this, uh, this solution that's probably represent 50% of the ATC market so far. So that's, that's the map uh, where our products have been installed. Uh, our most uh, important uh, customers are uh, in Asia. I think uh, this year uh, our first customer is, uh, is, in, is Singapore, uh, or 2023 put it like that. Uh, but in terms of recording where we have the most license installed are in Europe with, uh, with Germany being our first uh, country that we uh, worked with, um, and also the Netherlands uh, and uh, Italy currently. Um, outside of Europe, of course, uh, we are uh, very present in the US, and here our solution is recording all the control centers uh, that are uh, in the US. It's 20 control centers, and uh, you can imagine that's a few thousand position that uh, where our solution is installed. Here we are working with uh, industrial partners. Switzerland, so you may know or may not know about Switzerland. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of a very special country, very small. It's uh, 400 kilometers from east to west, and uh, but uh, very different um, approaches when, uh, you know, dealing about the uh, the ATM um, procedures uh, between west to east. So it's almost like having two countries. And we wanted, and SkyGuide wish was to reunify the country. And that's uh, the origin of uh, the virtual center uh, that uh, was currently, uh, that is currently developed at, uh, in Switzerland. So reunifying, starting with the upper space and then making one system for the whole of Switzerland uh, with one data uh, center covering the two uh, main parts of Switzerland, the, the east and the west, with unified procedures, unified architecture, everything being based on new technologies using uh, service-oriented architecture. So that was a big project launched by SkyGuide a few years ago. And in fact, again, uh, it's where we put a lot of energy and, and innovation, both on the NSP side and, and Skysoft side. And, and to do that, you can imagine that it's not happening from, uh, from one day to the other. Uh, we had to reorganize the way we are working with, uh, with SkyGuide. And we built what we called uh, a software factory, and that's very important. We have in this software fa factory, 
uh, developers, testers, engineer, project, product, product managers from both SkyGuide and SkySoft working uh, as a team. So that's very important together with the agile methodology that we are using to develop new application to have those teams working together, even having the same offices and sharing the work together. So that's, that's very important. And of course, uh, we are not the only one producing solutions for uh, SkyGuide. SkyGuide also buys solutions from the market. And of course, we have to integrate those applications both from the, on the market uh, uh, with what we are developing uh, as uh, SkySoft and SkyGuide software factory. So that's very important. As Magnus said, there is not just one solution uh producing an atm system it's the combination of self-developed uh purchase system that make it complete and make it uh over operable so that's that's why uh we are sharing a lot of views with uh with them we believe that uh, we can bring more value to our customer by working by modules working on open architecture than just buying off the shelf products uh, on the market. And this is a little bit the, the, the way the, uh, the software uh, factory is, is organized. So we see here uh, customers playing uh, a part. Uh, so SkyGuide, of course, SkyGuide is uh, the main, um, uh, we say, customers for SkySoft, of course, and we have been working extensively for many years, 20 years with them developing the solution. So uh, there is a lot of action and this is really what makes the difference between buying off the shelf products and what we do is that we are very close to the controllers. They are just next door in the center. So it's very easy to get them on board, have a team of core specialists helping building the requirements on which our uh, organizations, SkyGuide and SkySoft, are working uh, for, for development purposes. But the, the, the good thing is, is that we can duplicate this system with other INSPs, and that's, that's where partnership uh, are very important. So for instance, with Singapore, we are now currently working on developing uh, their next generation HMI, uh, training their team to use the service-oriented architecture that, that we are promoting, uh, getting them on board to co-develop the solution. So I really believe this is the way the next generation of uh, ATM solution will be developed involving teams from different vendors and different uh, customers at the same time. So this is the whole strategy that we are having at SkyGuide and SkySoft to look for partners, INSPs, industrial partners, to continue on working with this kind of organization. And that was it um, from, from my side. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. So I can see um, we have two questions in already from the audience. Um, so that's fantastic. I will get to those uh, now. But uh, I would also encourage uh, people in the audience to, to submit their questions now. Uh, if you leave them too late, we run out of time and, and, uh, and we, don't, we don't get the answers that we all need. Um, but uh, I'll ask this question for, from Nick Yaskew, uh, first of all. Um, so apologies, Nick, if I if I mispronounce your name. Uh, so Nick uh, wants to know about the design philosophy um, for defining the requirements for a CWP, um, a controller workstation position, uh, and how this fits into the control rooms within an ATC tower, an ATC facility. So um, CWP design philosophies. What's your approach? How do you fit that into the control rooms uh, within an a within an ATC or ACC? Uh, who, who would like to take that? Uh, you, so according to what you're saying, guys, your approaches should be quite similar, right? Uh, well, yeah. they are. Right? Yes, I can start, uh, and maybe Magnus will will, will complete. Uh, well, I think when we originally started uh, to develop the uh, HMI for for Skydent, and really that was our first project we started our company with. 
uh, in 2001 um, is really to get the uh, involvement at from the head coast from day one. It's really it was really the way we wanted to to have. It's uh, not an HMI that would fit for just anyone, but really an HMI that fits for the controller's operation. And the more uh, we were developing and putting effort on that, the more our strategy was to reduce the cognitive workload on, on the NSPs and make sure they had a tool uh, which could help them uh, securing the, um, their day-to-day -day job. That, that's really the, the, the key factor was involving the, um, the controllers before technology. Yes, I mean, uh... Uh, it's similar by us. I mean, we and, and we have, like I said, we are owned by an ANSP and we work very, really closely with the uh, ISAVI ANS. And we have, you know, three times a week our controllers spending their whole day here now because we are, you know, with a new UI that we have, we have already in operation at ANS for approach, but now we are, you know, finalizing it for the ACC. Uh, and now, then, two or three years ago, we added hunger control into this. So we have this, you know, constant uh, design meetings with UI designers and also the, the you know, lead programmers uh, figuring out a way to involve the UI, uh, making things easier. But there is always this, this factor of you cannot, in this domain, you cannot change too many things at the same time because, you know, uh, air traffic controllers are you know they know their things and they want to have it you know they don't actually want to change but there is a need for change so you know you have to go slowly in in the direction uh, maybe change something now and have that in operation for a you know some time and then change a little bit more so it is yeah it is it's a very conservative domain so it is a challenge uh, to do this and, and 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 finding new and better solutions in the ui or ux but but the only way to do it is, like Claude said, we just work closely with the with the user and 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 you know try to motivate each other to you know to the best way forward. Thank you, Magnus. So I have a follow-on question for my own curiosity, just very quickly. Um, do you um, do you how often do you implement updates and do you is it is it, you mentioned there that there's risk and you don't want to change things too often. I mean, is yeah. there, is there, is how, how do you approach that? Is it a very slow process or? I mean, if, if I will start with that, I mean, it depends. Uh, uh, if you have a major, major release, you know, you know that takes time. And, and sometimes you need to, you know, uh, train the air traffic controllers for a major uh, change, if it's a major change in how they operate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for a, you, you, you would like, as a software company, you would like to have like, you know, uh, recurrent updates, you know, when just as soon as you have add something new or change something in a better way, you just want to put it out there and, and let the user, you know, use it. But again, this is, a, this is a safety critical, uh, you know, operation that we are, you know, servicing and, and you, you, you need to do it in a, in the steps and we, when we have an update the, the user wants to see it want to have it uh what we do we actually have a operation you know in, in at our, with our customer we just have a like a test setup we install a new updates there and they can go between shifts or even on the shift when they're on a break look at things you know get familiar with it and sometimes it is there for like three months before uh, we put it in operation or the customer is ready to put it in operation it is usually the the, the, the limited factor that the, the customer is you know you know ha has to happen for example in iceland we we never update the system in, during the summer when the most of the traffic is it is we have a window in the winter you know before the summer maybe in now february march and then in uh, october november and then December is Christmas, and and so it is, you know. So usually we have two major updates a year, and sometimes there are some patches and, and, and smaller fixes. But regarding this, I mean, we have, we have, you know, had had a 
good idea for my air traffic controller to you know change uh, make a change that really will help them uh, in their work and we have designed it developed it and installed it in in three months and this is the, and it's an operation in three months and and, and but so, so it's that rapidly if you are working closely with the NSPs like that but other changes need much much more time than that okay thank you thank you magnus claude do you have anything to add on this subject before we move on yes maybe a, a little something on the methodology as you as i mentioned we are using the agile methodology so uh we are going to this process of having cycles of developments in which we are involving the uh, the users so uh before we have a specific uh, version into operation. We have al already those cycle of, uh, of validation that help us making sure that uh, when we go for operation, we have. Oh, I've just lost my. Right, uh, important also to make sure that when we deliver a solution uh, we have something which is um, uh, ready to go but also from from the, our uh, regulator perspective so all that documentation and and uh, certification that goes with it so which is very important so it's a very cumbersome work altogether. so we we prefer doing well and 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 wait for some time to have something in operation uh rather than doing multiple uh you know step back and forth thank you that's very 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 interesting thank you claude so I'll, let's take another um question from the from the audience thank you for this this is from uh, ben williams he is asking this is a subject that interested me actually um he's asking uh, about integration through european collaborations such as iTech and I believe Magnus you mentioned co pans as well um, how does what you're doing fit within this um, the components are running in the cloud and ASMPs can su subscribe to just parts of it or all of it um, or am I asking about your competition he's written here very tactically does that make sense Claude do you want to take that first I could try <laughs> uh, well of, of, of course the um, Although iTech and Coupons um, are very present in the market, uh, they use a, a different strategy that, that what we do. Um, they try to gather NSPs around one set of solution and make it uh, applicable to all NSPs. Why our idea is more to work with individual alliance partners and, and really develop uh, specific application for each and every use because at the end of the day we are absolutely convinced that it's not one system fitting all needs it's all the contrary especially now that we are going through the service oriented architecture on a modular approach that where modules can really be uh, used by certain uh, nsps and not by others uh, that would make no sense uh, we have the possibility to to, to use that uh, component approach to to make sure there there is a situation uh, solutions that fits the needs of NSPs and uh, that are uh, have been developed specifically for them uh, with the cost that are only theirs and not the cost of all NSPs you know and 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 also for their own constraints so that's that's the interest of working closely with other companies like ours is to co-develop, share the cost, share the risk, and and put together a solution that really fits for the NSP's needs. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if I can add to this, um, you know, the challenges maybe that, that the big suppliers have, they have not, like we are talking about, we have two or three customers. Uh, they have, I don't know, 100 or something. So they want to make it easier for them also to like have like one unified solution and just try to get everybody on board on that. And, and the Copans, you know, the, I think it's six or seven NSPs that are in, in that. I mean, I'm not sure how many. I think some of them, they even have less authority than others. So others, you know, can decide things. But, 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 so this is a 
works in a way, but uh, I mean, we have two main uh, customers, you could say. There's uh, ESA ANS and Angora Control. Uh, quite a different customers because, uh, you know, like other one is here in the Atlantic area, Atlantic Ocean, and Oceanic area, and then uh, Hong Kong is in, in the middle of Europe, you know, with the, the intensity of the traffic that is there. We actually, I mean, we are running this, um, you know, we, ha we have actually the, exactly the same system for both of them. However, there is configured in a different way. So, so the operation or the UI is, you know, looks similar, but, you know, there is a lot of all the lists or how the mouse works and everything is totally different to, you know, different uh, uh, customers. So when an air traffic controller from Isavia comes here to a test area and, and start to move the mouse for the Hong Kong control uh, system, he just, oh, what's happening? Because when you scroll in this, then you zoom, but for other, you know, you need to do something else to zoom. So this is, this for us, is just configuration. So, um, and we think this can be done for, you know, uh, you know, 100 customers with a different configuration. You need, of course, to have, like we have been saying again and again, a modular system. I mean, I think the systems that are in Copans, they are built actually at, I believe on old technology, so and 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 just need to, and these big uh, suppliers they just need to, uh, I believe, refactor the things about the, how they are doing things. Uh, they are they are trying to force this old technology with, with this uh, uh, partnerships, you know, on on their customers, and and and, and they are doing it quite well uh, in, in a way. So, so yeah, but th this doesn't have to be like this, and I mean. What we see also, I mean, okay, we could use uh, SkySoft UI for, you know, on top of our backend, uh, and that this is the, how we are actually thinking. And it would surprise me that, you know, we would have a joint project with SkySoft in the next two or three years where we have a SkySoft components and then term system components, and maybe other third party components into, you know, one unified ATM system. Okay. All right. Thank you, Magnus. Um, Thomas Buchanan, thank you for your question. I believe it was on a very similar subject, really. Uh, that, so I've, I've just published it. But if you're not satisfied, if you've not got the answer to your question in, in what the uh, what the guys said, then just let us know again in the Q&A and, uh, and I'll, I'll address that and address that to them again. But uh, what you guys are talking about now leads quite nicely onto the question from uh, Daniel uh, why, why Dale from uh, this question that he's asking about um, how to handle intellectual property rights. Um, uh, so assuming you develop for your ANSP systems, system parts, and then you want to sell them to other ANSPs, um, what, what, how, how are IP rights handled? Okay, I can maybe take this one to start with. Uh, for us, is very easy. So we are sharing the IP rights with SkyGuide. So SkyGuide is, is uh, obviously uh, the main user of our system, but we are entitled to uh, distribute the software to uh, other potential customers. So it's uh, we are sharing the, the, the uh, intellectual property rights. When there are projects which are unique to SkyGuide and do, do not really mean um that um we could sell them outside of skyguide then we just leave the ip rights with skyguide as simple as that okay and similar it's to you, yeah it's similar we we are well, actually turn has the ip rights of our what we are developing for isavia uh, however they they get all the code and are allowed to if they would like to change something or do something with it get maybe third party uh, or you know other software vendor to you know develop a new functionality they could do that but they cannot sell it or anything we we have the right to you know uh, sell it with our software so that's the that's contract with isa uh, it's a different con con contract with Hong Kong control uh, so but we see that for example what is usually the difference is the ui i mean the the backend is very similar in most of the cases. So 
and that's why I said before, maybe we will have a UI from other vendor like Skysoft on top of our backend or, or you know, our backend with some other parts of, from a third party. So, so ANSP now that has some ANSPs are even, you know, developing their own UI, even in Europe, you know, and they could and maybe would need uh, some module in their uh, in the back end. They, they should come and talk to Skysoft or, or Skyguide to cooperate on that. And, and we could even, you know, take it further and co-develop some parts uh, with uh, others. And, uh, and of course, that the IP rights will be more complicated then, but we, I think there is always a solution. If, uh, if you get, you know, not too many lawyers on board, then, then you can find a solution, I think. <laughs> okay. you need them still. That's a good one. Okay, so we so I'll move on now to the next question swiftly because we we got about half, we got about six questions left. We got about fifteen minutes. So um, this one question is from Kari Kari Ingebrigtsen. Um, apologies again for the surname uh, mispronunciation. Um, so she wants to know about open source Magnus. So I think it was you that that mentioned open source software. Um, I can't uh, remember. What Yes. Actually, I think it was Cloud. I mean, Cloud. Oh, maybe he, cloud. Sorry, he, was, uh, he, was, he was proud, proud of yeah. uh, mentioning that they were the, one of the first to open source a, a UI. They have a, like a UI that. Uh -huh. And I yeah. remember when, when we saw it on the online, we, we, we actually checked it out and, and, and many yeah. years ago. And well, Chloe yeah. wants to know if open source really means free without a license. Are you going to reassure him here, Paul? So, so, in fact, um, what uh, Magnus is mentioning is uh, the Albatross Air situation display that uh, we uh, have in open source since uh, 2009. And there is um, an, an open source version, uh, which is really open to everyone wanting to, to download. You just have to register on our albatross.io uh, website and, and, and you get the, the, the version uh to download together with some um documentation attached to that and there is a commercial uh, version of this same air situation displays where we supply on top of the of the source code uh effectively all the the documentation to get it certified of course we are selling services around that uh, open source um mm -hmm. hmi and that's where we make a little bit of money uh mm -hmm. but uh, that's 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 the principle and mm -hmm. and we had very nice projects with uh european nsps around with this uh hmi so that's uh that's the it was a i think a good innovation in in uh at the time we we have done that it's, it's yeah, yeah. got a follow-up question here sorry to cut across there um but we're getting lots of questions to get through. So, is the issue they would also like to know is the interface between uh, CWP and FDPS based on OpenATM? Based on OpenATM. OpenATM? No, I mean I don't know. Not here at the turn, at least. Uh, there is no standard between the, you know, at least standards that we have seen and is usable for the. Could say the connection between the workstation or the UI and and, and the FTP, uh, but you know we we are using could say standardized uh, uh, protocols um, uh, that you know we we define actually. I mean, when, but when it's based on swim, you know, if 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 somebody you know, most of you are probably aware of that. So we use the same could say structure as is in in swim. Uh, but we use, I don't remember the name of the GRC or something, GRPC or something. Uh, it's, it's, I think it, Google invented it and, and, and we, we are using that to communicate between the, the UI and the FTP now. But actually, when we have, you have an old FTP system, you need to con connect to that. You will, will have to create or, you know, Create the protocol actually what the old FTP system is using. So, so uh, yeah, that is what you just have to do. But this is one of the things that we and I mentioned it in my slides. We need to st find a way to standardize this, and and the ANSPs has to have to, you know, uh, force that. 
because the big suppliers are not going to do it or, or you know or, or the, so the NSPs in my opinion they need to really think think serious of standardize you know, the could say the interfaces between all these modules and if it yeah. is standardized you know you can find you know a new supplier for part of uh, your ATM system or the system you use to control the traffic in your area yeah uh, and another part to of the answer comes from the architecture itself uh, as you know, with our virtual center, we are using a service-oriented architecture where, uh, in fact, the different applications are, are decoupled uh, and uh, running on the, uh, as a service on 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 the on, on the bus. So that that's really something that uh, very major uh, NSPs in Europe, but also as well, are, are considering using. So really decoupling the different modules of the system working on on standardized architecture so that's that's the also to us the the way forward in the um uh in the development of new systems okay thank you thank you Claude. so let's move on to this question here from Pierre K Pierre Cady. uh Pierre, uh this is a good question actually i'm not sure if you if there is a if you're going to want to want to answer it but um obviously you both mentioned that you work closely with ANSPs very closely indeed um, are there any ever any conflicts of interest um, with regards to be, having fair competition in acquisition programs? Um, do other companies ever protest that you um, have an unfair advantage over competitors, or does everyone just get along very nicely all the time? I think it's going uh, pretty nicely. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I, I mean really. Uh, for, for, from our perspective, where we we have, as I said, uh, a common uh, development uh, software factory. So, so it's natural that for those core components, uh, having the team working together, so we uh, we are uh, working um, uh, very closely with, with SkyGuide. But there are many other systems where we are in competition with third parties. Uh, and, and where you know we just have to uh, answer RFPs and 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 make the our best efforts to uh, to deliver the the right solution at the right price for for, for SkyGuide. So it really depends from from one application to the other, for, at least for for SkySoft. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is this is a good question, and, and uh, yeah, and, and, and you need to and the ANSPs like a, a, easily ANS they. You know they they look look at things you know in you know bigger you know in, a, in the bigger picture and and all they're always checking you know is there a better way to do things than you know uh, go to turn and let them develop it and and in recent years we have been putting more and more focus on the you know the ATM system itself the Polaris and the simulator. You know, if you if you go through the 25 years history of terms, the relationship between ESA-ENS and Turn system, I think it is, I think there are probably 150 projects that we have been in developing of some kind of equipment or some kind of thing that you know. So now they're putting this. We are putting focus on this, but this is a. If you ask me, this is not a fair game, but not. Because of this, I think I think like I mentioned before, there there, there is a duopoly in this market in Europe, and and the position of the big suppliers are quite strong, and 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 so I would say we I wish it was a fair game, and we had maybe a more chance to to could say survive or or, or be more more successful, but uh, it is and but we are fighting there, and 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 uh, yeah, it is. It is, a, it is a challenge and, and yeah so uh, so i have a, a couple of questions on this theme really this this topic um and i know this is about partnership working uh, not not about competition this session this webinar uh but from thomas buchanan who i mentioned earlier um he he wants to ask um how can the smaller manufacturers make big ones move into um move into a needed direction how can we make more competition um and on the same kind of topic, there's a there's a person here called Henry Nusisatria, um, who's talking about the situation at Nav Canada, where they have Navcam ATM, uh, and and which is part of Nav Canada, 
uh, they used to have NAVCAM ATMs to supply for their ATM systems, but now that NAV Canada has chosen FD, FDPS from Indra, uh, NAVCAM ATM is starting to close its business. Could this happen elsewhere? Um, so on that David and Goliath situation and competition, have you got any other comments on that, guys? Obviously not directly about other businesses if you don't want to. I, I can take maybe the, the one on, on North Canada because we, we have a lot of friends there. <laughs> I must yeah. say we, we, we have been uh, exchanging views with NAF Canada and, and you're right. Uh, they were exactly having the same uh, construction that uh, that Skysoft and, uh, and Tern had. And they recently made their choice for the DFDP from, from Indra, if I understood well the situation. Now, I don't think uh, that uh, they leave everything to Indra. I think they are also willing, at least for their own use, uh, they, they want to continue being a part of the development team and, and, and continue to, to, to share some of the business. I think it's more their export business, which will be uh, uh, not addressed the same way it was before, but for the internal one, I understood that they will co-work with, uh, with Indra. So it's based of mixed situation there. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, okay, sh should we move on? Uh, I, I'd like to ask this question here from um, Thomas Dam, who is asking, how are the customers, i.e. Your, your air navigation service providers, involved in the functional decomposition of the overall ATM system and the interface definition. Have you kind of answered that already, guys, or would you want to give that another go? Uh, I think we, I, I gave a, a short Very answer good. to that. Uh, it's, it's, it's really the, uh, the question about architecture and how we decouple the services and the different components from 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 the system so it's it's really uh yeah what i already said earlier so it's trying to to use the the service architecture to to decouple the systems and 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 make basically components coming from different vendors potentially working together on on the on that architecture okay thank you uh i i'd just like to ask this question uh from heidi uh uzard as well because it's very politely put First of all, she says, thank you for the excellent presentation. Uh, and on a, on a more technical subject, um, do you know which IP version is used in European ASMP's telecoms, i.e. IP version 4 or IP version 6, uh, for transmission of data exchange for air traffic services? Do you, do you use that protocol? Uh, I, I think it's IP 4, I think so, but I am not sure. Okay. Oh, and, uh, it's, like a, it's like a technical, really technical question, even though, no, I was once a programmer, it's a long time ago. And <laughs> yeah, okay. and it, it's even worse for me because I'm not an engineer at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an excellent question. Well done, Heidi. Uh, so uh, let's, let's take this one from Chris Wade. We've only got uh, maybe five minutes or so left. I think we will get through them all, but if you... If you have any, uh, we don't get to any, or if you have any outstanding questions, um, then I'm, I'm sure Claude and Magnus can get back to you via email or offline. Uh, we, we'll do our best to answer everything. Anyway, um, Chris would like to know, um, how useful is it when developing solutions to have a close connection with an ANSP to involve the ASMP controllers, uh, engineers in that process? I should imagine very, right? Yes, if I all start, I, I, it, it is really important, and uh, and this we are. This is could say our main focus is you know getting the air traffic controllers on board, and also the technical people that are maintaining the system. We cannot forget them. They, I mean, they are you know making sure they are up and running you know twenty four seven, and 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 they need to you know monitor them, and so we. It's also could say the user interface or the, or the working procedures for the technical people and but you know when you go with the air traffic controllers you know like we are doing we have a workshop you know uh, meeting them you know like now we are meeting them you know twice a week or three times a week uh, they also get involved and they will be, they are excited so they will be you know more ready when they you know they, when they have a new update you know because they were, were you know were a part of it and 
even though only few of them are here of the hundreds that are you know then using the system you know they they you know will promote it and promote the change also you know when they are having coffee with their colleagues and and, and so it's it's extremely important mm -hmm. to do this and yeah and we have the opportunity to do it with it because we are you know working so closely with the ansps it, as the, the same with us, for instance, we are developing a, a new generation of controller support tools based on artificial intelligence uh, named Charlie. And I invite all the, the potential visitor to a space world to come and, and see us in Geneva in a few weeks time to, 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 to discuss that with us. So basically, this uh, controller support tools uh, would help the controller uh, solving conflicts, uh, addressing congestions, and there are, we have a few tools like that. And those um, new tools are replicating the way a controller would solve this conflict or would solve this conjecture. It's helping them handling more traffic, and and but the way they would have done it. So we've had this close cooperation with the controllers and the intimacy with, that we have with them. We would not have been able to develop such a tool. At the end of the day, anyway, it's the controller that makes the decision. It's not the tool, but to to but to create those tools, we we needed to have a close cooperation between the controllers and the, the data scientists and and the developers of that system together. Okay, thank you, Claude. Thank you, Magnus. Uh, so there is a question here from Thomas Hess uh, on uh, Claude. I think you mentioned the agile approach to development earlier. Uh, he wants to know, does it mean you update the operational system every two to four weeks? The short no. Answer to that, no. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's not exactly that uh, which I meant. It is yeah. that uh, we are conducting the, the project on an agile methodology. So we, we have those sprints effectively of several weeks and one after another. And, and the development are progressing according to those sprints and the review that are made. Uh, but it's not that we have a new version of the uh, ATM system every week. No, absolutely not. Let, let me just ask you this follow-on question as well, uh, Cloud, Cloud, from this from Homer, Emery Nusa Satria, uh, who, who, who seems to think that is Skysoft ATM moving away from ATM systems and more focusing on ATM recording? Is he is he right to be suspicious mm. of that? Or? No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's right. I mean, the uh, the recording is uh, mostly what we do on the uh, on the export market, uh, together with uh, some consulting. I, may, I mentioned Singapore, but it it represents only uh, twenty percent probably of our sales. So, the 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 rest. I mean, the ATM system, Cesar is make is is a big part of what we are doing, and, and it's mostly. Uh, uh, ATM system. So now the recording is is a niche. We are a leader in this domain, and we want to remain a leader in that domain. But it's not taking uh, over what we do in in ATM. Okay, thank you, Magnus. This, can I ask you this question from Vincent Lamberti, who is asking you about tenders? When calls for tenders are issued by ANSPs, they tend to want multiple references in recent years. Uh, so they want multiple references. Which can be which can be an obst obstacle for smaller companies. Uh, how do you deal with this? I mean, <laughs> if there are like a requirement that we cannot m meet regarding you know references, then it's difficult to deal with it. Uh, you 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 will have just need to not compete there. Um, but yeah, we. But we we have quite a lot of references actually for our polar system. Like I mentioned in this before in my presentation, you know, we have since two thousand and eight or nine and seven deployed around fourteen or fifteen systems around the world of of the you know our ATM system. So we have we have a, quite a good references. But it happens that we are, you know, there are. We are a small company. Sometimes there are like uh, you know revenue. You know you need to have a certain amount of revenue so you can compete. And sometimes we cannot you know meet that. And so we have sometimes tried to go with a partner that is bigger and and we will like you know front it for us. But it it is a it is a challenge for smaller smaller uh, companies. And but we also have to recognize that sometimes the the NSPs they have a, like a preferred 
supplier. I mean, they have been working closely with this somebody, and they and they want to keep on working with this person or this company, and and they of then of course try to find find a way to make him you could say more. Yeah, favorable okay. to that uh, that part, and but you know, and, and I think that is in a way normal. It is, it is, yeah. It, it, but sometimes we just we we just skip these tenders, you know, just and look to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, Magnus. Uh, so let's just squeeze this last question in. This will be the final question. Thank you, guys. We answered nearly twenty questions today, so really, really put you through your paces. I appreciate it. All the questions, your time, and the the audience's time in asking the questions. So Thomas would like to know, in your opinion, how much easier is it to introduce new technologies and modern development environments, uh, new tools for smaller companies as opposed to the big organizations? Do you think it's easier if you're a small? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's easier, but uh, I think we are definitely more flexible than, than bigger companies. So we are more agile in the sense that we can follow up the trends of innovation a bit more quickly mm -hmm. than uh, than the other would do uh, but on the other side we don't have the same financial means probably that uh, that the large company when uh, they want to invest they can invest and that's, that's of yeah. course is a limitation so it's yeah mm -hmm. both both ways magnus do you have anything to add no i think that was, that was a good answer i i don't have much to add to that it is yeah fantastic okay well with that we we, we got like i said we got through a lot of questions there so that's that's great and i, I it's uh, thank you to the audience and and thank you to to the, your, the presenters here today at, at turn and, and skysoft for, for sponsoring it and making this this session happen as well um i'll, I'll turn to you first claude you, is if you communicated what you wanted to communicate today is there anything else you'd like to say before we finish Oh, I just wanted to uh, probably, as I did earlier, invite all uh, visitors, to, uh, potential visitors, to come and join uh, us. Uh, Tian, we of course have a, a booth there too. Uh, come us in, and join us in Geneva in uh, in a few weeks' time. We'll be extremely pleased to to explain what we do uh, on the face to face. Okay, thank you, Claude. Thanks for the invite. I'll take you up on that. Um, uh, Magnus, can can we all come to your your booth as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I got the the most important things through. So, uh, but just and thank you, just for inviting me to this, and 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 uh, thanks to all the audience to listen. And 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 uh, yeah, like I say, I will say same as Claude. You know, come visit us in Geneva if you come there, and 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 I encourage you to, you know, be in touch if there are any questions or thoughts or anything you would like to know. Yeah, great. And there's a, there should be a, there should be an email address on the on the sticky up there. Um, well, I thought I put it anyway. Uh, there is a recording of this session. Will be you'll get an email link uh, with the recording of the session uh, that you can view again and and scroll fast forwards backwards to the bits that you want. Uh, and I am not sure if the slides will be available, but if you email us uh, the magazine, uh, I'm sure we can facilitate that. Um, so. Thank you again for, for all the amazing questions. The, the, I'm, I'm very impressed by the by the level of of, uh, of, of interest and engagement in this topic, um, and and uh, I, I wish you all uh, a very happy rest of your day wherever you are. Thank you, Ben, and thank you to all the audience. Thank you. Thank you.